that he wanted to say to the church. So we're going to go on and ask him to come up. And I hope y'all got your word together. And then we're going to have praise. You're not doing praise and worship? No, I am doing praise and worship. Oh, okay. yeah, I am. But the okay. other. You got a word in it? I am doing it, yeah. Okay. And remember, those that I asked, you're supposed to have your word on love. Y'all got seven minutes to talk about love. Y'all probably was I supposed Yeah, you're supposed to give a word, too. Okay, I, I don't. I, I, I'm not. Sorry. You can just get a Bible and just grab. Okay. Well, God so loved the world. An incident I had over a week ago. And um, I was told about it. But I was angry last week about the situation and um, I could go in deep into it but I'm not I just say this it won't happen again was I wrong I was but like I said an incident happened and I do ask for your forgiveness but the Bible said confess your faults to one another that you may be healed and I'm doing that. I'm confessing my faults. I'm not too good to say that I was in the wrong for what I've done. But it goes deeper than that. I just leave that alone. But I, I am, you know, grateful that to be pastor, um, to be in pastor um, George's birthday last week. I enjoyed it. Thank you for the opportunity. But um, I just apologize. So this is where it is. Amen. And I'm glad that he apologized because, you know, as a pastor, we have to have a certain standard. And if we are acting unseemly, you know, I go to I go to um, the restaurant all the time up there at MCL. I've been there several times with Pastor Marlene. I go up there and eat by myself. And my daughter has friends that work up there. So, you know, I don't like things being reported back. I went to MCL one day. It was me and my daughter. And um, my daughter's friend or whatever had worked at the other MCL. They took pictures of us at MCL. So, you know, you never know who people know. And you know, you just gotta be careful. We wanna be a good example. And, and being a pastor, Larez just been ordained as a pastor. So he's a new pastor. And stuff that you do as a minister, you can pastor make you know show out a little bit, minister make the show out, people, sister, brothers, prophets, they might be fornicating you don't you're not supposed to fornicate anyway <laughs> but if you have if you're a pastor and you're in fornication boy that gets all over the city so we have to set up a standard of holiness we have to humble ourselves there's a lot of times it's places i don't want to go it's places i didn't want to be at but i had to humble myself to be there because it wasn't about me. It was about the grace and glory of God so that God could get the glory. It's been times I went to churches. I didn't feel like speaking. I remember when my mother passed, uh, my mother passed on a Monday. I think it was on a Monday. I was scheduled to preach that Wednesday, that Thursday, and that Friday. And my mother had just passed. So the only day that I had off was that Tuesday because she passed on a Monday. Oh, Jesus. I, the person, they called me to say, are you still coming? I know your mother just passed. I went. What? And I preached. And I preached and God really used me. And as soon as the service was over, I went in the bathroom and I cried. And I bawled and I bawled and I cried. And then the next day, which was a Thursday, I was scheduled to preach somewhere. So I went and I preached. I what? got in the car and cried. Then the next day, which was a Friday, what? I was scheduled to preach somewhere. And I went and I preached and I cried. As soon as I got in the car and I called, the Lord used me to call people out and prophesy to them. My mother had just passed. Jesus. On that Monday, I'm preaching 
Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. But did I stop? Did I say my mother's died? And no, I can't preach because I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing it for the glory of God. Yes. We're ministering for the glory of God. We're ministering yes. that somebody yes. can be saved. Somebody can be set free. Yes. Somebody can be delivered. We're not doing it for ourselves. Come on, and if we're doing it for ourselves, we have the wrong motive. Right. We cannot have the wrong motive in ministry. Right. It's not about you having a name. It's not about you being seen. It's that the glory of God may be revealed. That yes. somebody may be saved. Somebody may be healed. Somebody may be delivered. Now, yes, we want we want to, the ministry to expand and we want it to expand and we want all of that. And we want to work full time and we don't want to have to be um, working right. a regular job right. and do ministry. Of course, we want that. But so that the glory of God may be revealed, we've got to do what God has called us to do. And we have to be humble. We've got to be humble. Anytime the spirit of pride to come in, it's not only going to mess you up, it's going to mess everybody else up in front of you. Yes. Because the spirit of pride, that's one of God things that God hates. So we have to humble ourselves. When we wrong, we got to apologize. Yes. We can't lie about it. We can't cover it up. We've got to come out in the front and say, yes, I was wrong. We can't say, no, I didn't do that. No, that's a lie. And the Bible says, every liar shall have their part in the lake. God don't care whether you're a pastor, whether you're a prophet, whether you're an apostle. If you're lying, you're going to hell. That's what he said. That's true. So we can't be a liar. Right. And the Bible says a liar won't even tarry in God's eyesight. So you don't even get a chance to give your give put in your verdict, to put in mm. your case. Because God don't even want to see you because everything coming out of your mouth is a lie. Yes. And when you lie once and you get caught in it, then people, they don't believe anything you say. And they're going to count you as a liar. Right. So we've got to have a standard of holiness. We've got to have a standard of righteousness. We may get mad, we may get angry, but walk away. Don't let God, because when you look bad, you make God look bad. Don't let God look bad. People want to talk about people ain't living nothing anyway. It's this one show on YouTube I do watch. It's called Dawson Speaks. And then he has a show called Dawson Denise. And everything that he has negative report is always about pastors. This pastor was shot. This pastor was, was in, in adultery. This pastor committed a molested children. Everything he says is bad about a pastor. And it's something he talking about the pastors when really he was called to preach. He was called to be a minister. His wife, they used to do um, minister down there with Creflo A. Dollar, and they left there. And so ever since they left there, they turned against the church. But you know what? When God has a calling upon your life, uh -huh. no matter what you try to do, now he got his YouTube channel, and he's preaching on there. So, but we don't want to make the church look bad. You know, we can never make God look bad because God is just awesome by himself. But we don't want to make the church look bad. Yeah. So, Pastor Lorez, we accept your apology. We're glad that you apologized, that you were humble. You know, God is going to raise you up. And what we're doing, see, people talk about being a pastor and apostle. The apostle helps the pastor get to wherever level they're supposed to be. It's not easy being an apostle. We ain't getting all this money. I mean, some people are, but I'm not. We're not getting all this prestige. What we're doing is helping people to get to the next level. The pastor's supposed to help the ministers get to the next level. The apostle helps the pastor get to the next level. That's the job. Yes, they you. build up the church. It's called the sin one. They help build up churches. Yes. Yes. They don't really do individualized ministry, but they help build up the churches. If I don't help build you up, who going to help build you up? They're going to split. What they do is when they see that you are a problem, they will have you sit down in church, 
they will take your time money, they will take whatever money they can get to you and that get from you, and they will never have you preach or minister. They may give you one chance to minister or to preach, but because they see you as a problem and they see you as a liability, they never do anything to help your growth, to help you get to the next level. They never they never come up against the sin and the mess in your life. But God said he would give the pastors after his own heart. A pastor that really loves you will tell you when you're nasty and when you're dirty. A pastor that really loves you will tell you when you're doing good. A pastor that really loves you will tell you when you know what you need to get out the bed. You know, you need to change your attitude. You got a nasty attitude. You need to change it. Put a smile upon your face. That's a pastor that cares about you. That's an apostle that cares about you. You want somebody smiling in your face all the while you going to hell? Because a lot of people have done that because they don't want to offend anybody. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. The valid take it by force. Uh -huh. You cannot be valid. You cannot take it by force if you're always smiling in somebody's face. If they're wrong, they're wrong. The Bible says cry loud and spare not. Uh -huh. So we as apostles, we got to tell them we're not going to be popular. The prophets are not going to be popular. They didn't even like the prophets. But you do what God has called you to do. And it's not going to feel comfortable. You're not going to be happy. But if it helps you to get to the next level so that you don't keep on being in the same cycle, then you go on and change. Yes, God. I know I want to change. I don't want to still be in the same cycle. I want to change. If you want to change in your life, you've got to change. You've got to allow the Holy Spirit to come in and change you. Amen. If you really believe God and believe that he is a reward of, the, of those that diligently seek him, if you really believe that he's all powerful and he's almighty, yeah, then yeah, you're yeah. willing to accept Amen. that say, God, change me. God, come into my life. God, come into my heart. God, come into my spirit and change me. And God will do that. You just got to believe. Amen. Sister Rose is going to come with praise and worship. I hope somebody that helps somebody. Amen. Because, see, people, you know, I see that they know you have a talent. They know you have a gift because you're a liability and you're a problem. They just make you sit for years and years. And you continue to sit in the same church for years and years, never being able to be used by God because uh -huh. nobody wanted to take that time. And then yeah. nobody wanted to correct you. Nobody wanted to take that time to tell you how you could be better, how you could do better. Uh -huh. Nobody wanted to mentor to you. If you sit there and sit there, you lose your gift. See there? Right. Go ahead, go ahead. But I don't want you to sit there. That's what those other churches did to you, Pastor Lorenz. You sat and sat for years, and they wouldn't use you other than Pastor Bruford since I've known you because they didn't want to deal with you. But we're going to deal with you because we love you. When you love your child, my son, he, be, he showed up last week, and I had to deal with him. And I might not dealt with him on the level that I should have done with him because I did have to repent. But I dealt with him. And he knew what he did. He will never do it again. Sometimes you got to deal with your children. If you let them go on and keep on doing all kind of crazy stuff, then you're not helping them. The Bible says God chasing those whom he loved. You can't have kids and let them do everything they want to do. No, you can't. You got to tell them when they're wrong because you're saving their soul. If you don't tell them when they're wrong, then when they grow up, they're going to be spoiled and they're going to think everything they want, they're supposed to get. And the police has no problem dealing with your children. Especially if they're African American. They will shoot them. They will beat them. They will taser them. They have no problem. That's true. So if I correct you, I tell my daughter when she was young, if I correct you, 
At least I'm not going to kill you. At least I love you. At least I'm going to take you to the doctor. I'm going to make sure you're fine. I'm going to make sure you're good. You're the police, they're going to gonna put you in jail and try to kill you. Maybe try to rape you. So allow the chastisement to come from somebody that loves you. Amen. That's not going to hurt you. That's doing something to help you get to the next level. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If we could just give the Lord a big round of applause. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. We, we love Jesus in here. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a big round of applause and stand to our feet? Hallelujah. Amen. We love him so much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything you've done. Yes. Thank yes, you for Lord. this holiday. Yes. Thank you for keeping us healthy. Yes, Lord. Thank you for being a fence around us. Hallelujah. During this pandemic. Thank you for being a fence around all of our loved ones, Lord Jesus. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I'm going to start off with I love you, Lord, because I love him so much because he first loved me. And the law of God is love. Love is the law. I looked up the word law and it said to conduct or rule over your actions. Yes. So love is the law of God. It's a rule yes. to love one another. Ephesians 6 says, keep the shots of peace on your feet. Seek peace and pursue it. Yes. So even in any situation, the Lord wants us to look for the peaceful way to go about it. Amen. Keep the shots of peace on in every situation because God is love. God is peace. Yes, God. You know, we get so much heartache at work and in our daily lives and everything we do and it's just good to know that the love of God is so overwhelming hallelujah and we can run into his arms at any time but he also wants us to be able to go to each other yeah. and receive love from one another yeah. thank you Jesus I love you I love you I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me Amen. in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise give them your heart my heart my soul it all belongs to you you paid the price for me yes way back on calvary that's why i praise you i lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Yes. I love you. Yes. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me. In such a special way, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, yes. my soul, it all belongs to you. You paid the price for me. Way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. 
That's why my heart is filled with praise. Yes. One more time. I love you. Yes. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me. Hallelujah. Such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my soul, it all belongs to you. You paid the price for me. Yes, he did. Way back on Calvary, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. You know what? It's about what you, what God is to you in your heart. Yes. Don't pay attention to me. It's about the praise that you have for God. You know, it's not about me. It's not about apostle. Like she said, it's about God's glory. And I'm standing up here for the glory of God. Amen. You know, I know I may not have the best voice or whatever, but I am here for the glory of God. Amen. And I am doing this for God's glory. Amen. And I'm happy to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He makes me happy. Be happy, you make me whole. Yeah. You take the pain away. Yeah. I'm so in love with you. You make me happy. Yeah. You make me whole. Yeah. You take the pain away. I'm so in love with you. You make me happy. You make me whole. You take the pain away.
too long about Jesus. Thank you. At the end of the day, when I get bad news from the doctor, when I get bad news at work, I don't have to worry because God will take care of me. Hallelujah. I don't work for First Step Recovery. I work for the Lord. And as long as I'm in his safety, I will be okay whether I'm alive or when I pass on from the land of the living. Yeah. And that's enough for me to have joy and be excited about. Oh, yeah. That no matter what, I'm going to yeah. be with oh, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I will pass it on to the apostle. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I just want to wish everybody... A happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. And we have a couple of things we want to pass out. Um, I know a lot of us are single, but you know what? That's okay. That's okay. You know, the devil was trying to tempt me um, last night. He said, why don't you call him? And um, he, I said, well, I'm not going to call him because I'm going to wait on who God has for me. <coughs> And I'm not going to call someone <coughs> just to say yeah. that I have a Valentine's. So I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So anyway, I said, God, that song was fitting. Whatever, God is our Valentine's. Yeah. God, everything that God does is right. Yeah. And I'm still believing God that next year that some of us will have marriages. Some of us will have marriages next year. I believe in God. I'll be one of them. I believe in which sister. Amen. I mean, I, here, here's, here's three more that can have this. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to give y'all a chance. I asked y'all to give about five minutes on love. So I hope y'all have y'all scripture. We're going to um, just have a light service, and I think we're going out to eat after service. But um, since your son is here, okay, thank you. Is that for me? Yes. Oh, thank you. Aww. I'm going to let your son, if he don't mind, say something yes. about you. Because I know you're single too. But our kids can be our Valentine's Day and our grandkids. Yeah. So I'm going to have him say something to his mom. And then when he gets done, I want... Kelsey's shaking her head, but you can say something, even if you say I love her. Preach, Kelsey. Yeah, that's right. You, you be ministering to those people that you be ministering to. On the phone, you can say something. And then if King or Tokyo or both of them together, if y'all can say something to your grandmother. Because I know she's been a blessing through the years. My children aren't here today. So they're doing their Valentine's. Jeremiah told me he got five women he's getting with today. Okay. So I said, well, I said, okay. I said, who are they? He said, I got five women. And they buy me candy. I said, well, Jeremiah, what you buy them? Nothing. Uh, uh, so y'all don't do that. Don't do like my son. He said he got five women buying him candy and doing stuff for him. But he didn't buy him nothing. He didn't give him a candy card, a donut. He did buy some donuts, but I think he bought the donuts for his friend. He bought me a donut. He bought me two donuts. So he, he what they call it, Maxon? What they call it now? They used to call it Maxon. But I don't know what he's doing. Finesse. He's yes, finessing, finessing he's over there finessing. with these women. <laughs> so I said, well, Jeremiah, nah, that's my business. Oh, he's so he 18, so he's going to be somebody do. he loves. <laughs> so you know how they do. So anyway, I'm going to ask your son to come first. Preach. Uh, I just want to say thank you for my mom. Uh, like I said, like yeah, I said, a lot of times, my dad been in jail my whole life, and my mom was always there. Yeah, my mom and grandma was my best friends. It it was always there when I was down bad and everything. And I appreciate them for that. And I love them so much to the death. I love you, mom. Oh, oh amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Preach. I'm not going up here alone. Okay, well, <laughs> I just want to say that my mom is my rock. Yeah. 
She's been here for me ever since I've been a little girl. <laughs> okay. I love her to death. Come here. <laughs> She's basically my everything at, at, at this point. That's awesome. <laughs> She's always been here for me no matter what. Even when I was going through elementary school, she was always here, middle school, high school. <laughs> so I just want to say that I love her to death and I would do just about anything for her. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, King, if you can say something, Tokyo. Yeah, come on up here. Yeah, you gotta go up here. You bold. You bold, King. Her name is Jesus. Little man. I did it. You can, you can go too. You wanna go up with him, Tokyo? It'd be nice. It'd be nice. You can pull your, your hood back. Okay. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about the hair because you know that's the style nowadays, the dreads. Let's go to see. Thank you, girl. I love you. Before we go there. Amen. Amen. Give her a hug. Amen. That's good. She never called me that. Amen. 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 I want to say to every one of y'all, I love y'all. Truly, I do. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I try to show it. I know sometimes it can be tight, but it's right. But I still love y'all. I really do. I love every one of y'all. I look forward to coming to church on Sunday. Yeah. Not just to give God praise, because I give him praise in the house, Amen. but just to be with y'all. I really do. And God has blessed me with some good people. Yeah. And I know God has been dealing with me that we need to mm -hmm. fast more and pray, because more people are coming. Yes, I feel is. that in the spirit. There's yeah. going to be a regrouping. Yes. Some people may leave, but then there's other people that's going to come. Yeah. I've been getting people, they've been prophesying to me. Some of them I don't know, some of them I do know. Hallelujah. But they don't know nothing about the situation at the church. Okay. And they've been prophesying the same thing. So God is true to his word. Yes. And I will go along with whatever shift that God wants to do. Because yes. I want to be, at the end of the day, it's about him. Yes. And that's what I want it to be. I want to be about him. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. You I got a chance to see. Huh? Could you make an announcement? Yes. You want to announce it? You can announce it yourself. Okay. 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 So you want to come up and announce it? And then we'll do our, you want, okay. You can come on up. If there's anybody would like, because it's supposed to be really, really cold outside today. And on 161 in Car Road, we've seen a lot of people sleeping outside. So we trying to take tents. So, well, now we need tents. We thought that's Aquarius and somebody else who got by tents. And we trying to get two gener uh, uh, propane heaters. It's $49 at uh, Lowe's. So we actually each person that can donate $10. To please to me, so we get this today. We want to take it around three or four. So before it get cold, we'll put the tent up and we want to be able to give them so it can be warm. So if you could please do ten dollars, that'd be great. Bishop Jerry Pierce is donating the blankets. Okay, now I don't know about the ten dollars, but whatever anybody can I mean, donate. You want to get, get and I'll, I'll do, yeah. I'll, I'll and we'll, okay, and then we'll just put in um, cash app. We'll send cash app okay. to you. Um, but anyway, we're going to go on. We're going to take up the offering real quick. And um, I'm going to ask Pastor Terry to come with his word about love. Then Candy to come with her word about the love. Can you come with your word about love five minutes? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll have her go first. Okay. Um, thank you, Jesus. Um, like I was singing during praise and worship, the law of God, love is the law of God. And with love, because Jesus has loved us, we have submitted with, to God because of his love. Love is the only thing that's going to make, love is the only thing that can conquer hate. That's true. Love is the only thing that can break those chains. 
And I have to have the love of God in me to be able to give the love of God to others. Amen. Amen. And that takes prayer. It takes me being in my word. It takes fasting. So no matter what I come up against, you know, because you'll be tested with your love. Oh, yeah. You'll be tested at work. Um, people will test you. Oh, yeah. And through all those tests in the Bible, everyone that tested God, when he, even when he was on the cross, and they were throwing rocks and pebbles at him, he said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Uh -huh. Go ahead. He still loved them. Yes. When they were cursing them, uh -huh. when they were hitting them, he still loved them. And the only way we are able to love like Jesus loved is if we pray and read our Bible. Amen. We have to get that fruit inside of us. Yes, I try to practice the fruits of the Spirit, the seven fruits of the Spirit, the kindness, the gentleness, the slow to anger, the temperance. Self-control. Because for me to practice those fruits, I have to love God. Yes, yes, you do. I have to want to be like God. Yes. You know, I encourage everyone here today to love one another through the shame, through the guilt, because there's a blessing in it. Amen. There's blessings when we love each other. There's blessings when we give to each other. Amen. Give when you don't have it to give. Amen. Because that shows faith. And faith and love go hand in hand. If my hand is like this all the time, if someone asks me for something, I always got my, my fist clenched. How can I receive? I have to be able to have an open heart and an open hand to give to others. But I can't give to others if I don't love others, do can I? I can't give to other people if I don't love other people, can I? You know, my supervisor was quitting at work, and she gave me a hard time. She did. She gave me a hard time. But on her last day, I went and bought her a card, and she loves Starbucks. She was a Starbucks queen. And I went and got her a gift card to Starbucks. Amen. Now, with if I didn't have Jesus in me, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was the love of God in my heart. Amen. Yes, yes. And when you have the love of God in you, you have the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the Holy Ghost will talk to you. And he will guide and guard you and govern you. He guides, guards, and governs. Amen. And he will guide and govern you to do what to do what's next. Mm -hmm. And I obey. Because when you listen to him, you may not want to do it. You may the Holy Spirit may say, Well, go buy so and so a car. You say, Well, man, she got on my nerves yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. She gave me a hard time. I don't want to. Yeah. But if you listen to the Holy Spirit, he'll never tell you wrong. Yeah. Everything the Holy Spirit tells you has purpose behind it. The Holy Ghost just don't talk for nothing. There's purpose behind it. Yes. And if he tells you to go do something, obey. Because there's a blessing behind it. Amen. You know, as you heard me say, you know, my supervisor is leaving. And I, I praise God. I mean, he will move your enemies out the way. Yes, he will move your footstools. Yes, he will. But if she didn't just move, it took prayer. Yes. It took me having faith. Yes. And no matter how nasty she was to me, I stayed nice. Amen. Yes, yes. I continued to love her. Yes. Yes. Because I have to let my light shine. Yes. I cannot let the enemy dim my light. That's what he wants. He wants me to come to work, someone treat me nasty, and then I'm in a bad mood for the rest of the day. That's it. That's it. He wants my light to be dim. Yes. He doesn't want it to shine. Yes, yes. Because when your light shines, you don't have to tell people about God. 
That's right. They're going to come up and ask you, why? What is that about you? Some of the clients, they say, Rose, what drugs you use? I say, it's prayer and it's God. Yes, yes. That's my drug. Getting on my knees. Yes. Meditating in worship. Yes, God. And praying. Amen. That's the drug. And it gives you unspeakable joy. Yes, God. I have joy unspeakable. I don't know what anybody else has in here today. Amen. Because I serve a loving father. Amen. Uh -huh. And I want to encourage everybody. I've lost a parent who's been in a divorce, who's lost a mom, who's lost a dad. We have a heavenly father who covers everything. Amen. Jesus loves you today. Amen. You don't have to worry because you have the love of God. Jesus is my heavenly father. I lost my earthly father, mm -hmm. but I still have a heavenly father. Yes. And I thank him for that. Yes. He's given me things that an earthly father could never give to me. Yes. He's done things for me that an earthly mother could never do. He's done things for me that a husband could never do. Amen. So I just encourage everyone today on this Valentine's Day, you have the love of Jesus. Yes. He loves you. Amen. So just be encouraged. And stay happy because God is love. Yes, he is. He's nothing else but love. Yes, he is. Thank you. Pastor Terry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for today. Yes. Because truly without God, where would we be? That's right. Yes. God has a love beyond compassion. Yes. He sent Jesus for our sins. Yes, God. And it's funny how she was speaking about that because I went to 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 5, which says, love is patient. Uh-huh. Love is kind. Yes. It does not envy. Yes. It does yes. not boast. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. It is not proud. Yes. Yes. It does not dishonor others. Yes. Come on now. It does not self seek. Yes. 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 It is not easily angered. Yes. Please tell. It keeps. No record of wrongs. Now, when I heard that, I shuddered in my spirit. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, forgive us of our sins. Yes. Because daily we do things that we should not do. Yes. Even though we do not see it, we should still be asking God's forgiveness. Yes. We still live in the sin of the skin. Yes. yes the do. skin that is put upon our bodies that God says stinks to his nostrils. What does that mean? That means the very skin that you wear, whether you know it or not, still sins. Yes. yes. And still needs to be reconciled with God daily and nightly. We need to keep ourselves clean, yes. holy, and pure. Yes. The problem is, is that our skin sometimes interferes with our daily activities. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. God forgive me, you know, when I sin. Mm -hmm. God forgive me when I do wrong. Yes. God forgive me for those things that I do not know. That's right. That's because you know right. what happens is we tend to forget about the things we do not know. Yes. We just live out our lives. Well, listen, yes. you can go to hell for not mentioning that. That's right. That is a sin. A sin that is unknown can take you to hell. That's right. So you need to pray up because anybody can read a Bible. That's right. Anybody can go to church. Come on now. That's the word. You got the word. Anybody can go out and feed the people. Yes. Anybody can do anything you want through God, but it's the life that you live for God. Yes. God has sent his only son. He had to turn his head while his son was being killed upon a cross. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So if he can love you like that, Come where on. is your love? Yeah. That's right. Where is your love for Christ today? Yes, God. How come churches are closing down today? Where is the love of Christ? Yes. I, I've been, man, God has just been touching my soul so much mm -hmm. that I've been learning so much. 
And I thank you for my leaders. I thank you for my chastisements. Because you know, truly, the chastisement is what brings forth the honor for God. So when someone chastises you, take that as something of love. Yes. Take that as something up to learn from yes. so that you can go to the next plateau so that you can carry on a new way of life with yes. God. Yes. It's time for us to stand yes. holy. It's yes. time for us to leave behind that skin that is bad for us yes. and start living the holy skin. Yes. That one that God wants to wrap us in. Yes. I love my God. Yes. I love yes. my God. My God does everything for me. You know what? He wakes me up in the morning. That's a miracle. Yes, it is. I'm walking. That's a miracle. I'm talking. That's a miracle. But you see, sometimes we don't see the love of Christ because we're not seeking it. And we need to start seeking it more. Yes. I've seen some miracles and some small things that some people would just go like this. But we need to start seeking God. We need to start being whole. Yes. We need to start walking with that love of Christ. Yes. We need to start showing people that we love them outside the buildings instead of just inside the buildings. Yes. And yes. to certain people, it's not a good idea. We need to show it to everyone. Everyone. It means even if the person is looking bad upon you, what did Jesus do? He loved them. He loved on his enemy. Yes, he did. So we need to start doing what Jesus did instead yes. of what we want to do yes. and start living holy. If God can send his only son for us, whoo! We need to start living holy. Yeah. We need to start doing right with the love of Christ. That's what today's about. It's not about loving your husband. Yes. It's not about loving your wife. It's not loving your girlfriend. It's about having the love of Christ first and foremost. Yes. Over all that, give him the love yes. first. Start yes. living holy. And then remember everything else. Yes. It all falls into line. Yes. Behind Christ. Yes. Behind Christ. You yes. hear what I'm saying? Behind Christ. Because Christ is standing before you. Or he should be. And then everything else falls behind Christ. Because truly, he gives you love. Yes. Give him the love that he deserves. Yes. Amen. 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 And that is the word that I got from Christ. And I'm going to tell you what. Living holy is about where it's all about. Yes, it is. Yes, Sharing his loving kindness. Yes. Not only with, uh, not even with just the church, but with the others. Yes. I mean, we don't go behind the doors eating up. But hopefully this year we're starting to learn more, gain more footage, and doing more with the love of Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo. We thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. different kinds of love. There's motherly love, fatherly yes, love, that's but, good, Candy. but the most one that we all need is the love from God. Yes. Yes. If you don't know God, let him fill your heart with love. Yes. Let him in. Because if everyone is gone, and everyone is gone, your kids are gone to college and everywhere else, they still love you, but God will always love you. No matter where you're at, or no matter what sins you have committed, 
So let God in your heart. He will stay with you always. Happy Valentine's Day and amen. Aww. Amen. That's wonderful. Pastor Marlene. Oh, we're talking about love. You got five minutes. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our Father gave his love when he died on the cross and he didn't let nothing stop him it didn't let our father gave love when he went to the cross and he died for you and me i thank god for love because i know that the all through my life those that really showed love they did the most and those that didn't they did the least but no matter what, sometimes if they do the least, you still need to show some love back. Sometimes when you feel like you don't want to show it, God will tell you to show it. I thank God for my two grandkids that are here today. They, they come and give me hugs, and they tell me they love me, and they put the little head on, the, on my shoulder, and I say, okay. I thank God for my apostle. My pastor does stuff like she'll pick me up to church and bring me here. And I really be appreciate that because I, I catch the bus when I can't and I can do everything else. But when I get that ride to church, it's a great one of the greatest things. How many people have their pastors or the apostles that pick them up? It's a great thing. Remember that. Show love. This is Valentine's Day. It's a day that we're showing love. Show love to those that have showed love to you. Give them a gift. It can be of any showing of love. It could be a hug. It could be uh, some material thing. It could be cash. Cash would be good because they give out a lot. Continuously. And then sometimes we don't even see when they're giving. And there's people going on like this. All I'm going to say today is if I could give out love to my pastor, Apostle, I want to thank you for every time you've been there when I needed someone to be there. My mom is gone. And when she left, I believe that she was straight up, straight up. But she's younger than me, my Apostle is. But my Apostle has been like a mother almost. I had to block the age. Because she has the maturity of an older person. And it's a good maturity. It's a God-given maturity. It's a blessed maturity. Bless those that bless you. Say thanks. There's many ways you can say thanks. But don't just say thanks. Give. It's always good to give, even to our apostles. Ours have been great. I'm acknowledging that because she's been great to me and my family and the death of my daughter. She's been there and I appreciate her. And so I'm just, I today say thank you for the bottom of my heart and thank you for being great for those that needed you also. All those that couldn't say thank you, that couldn't be here today, I'll say thank you for them and keep going forward. There's many more days for you, but even greater and your money's your money shall grow in even greater ways because of that. Because you've given out your heart many, many times, many, many days. She's given out of her heart and she's wrote people and she's picked us up, taken us places, everything. Today, let's just clap right now and I'm going to hand my mic over. Let's just give a clap to her because she's been a good woman of God. Thank you for our, our time. Yes. I tell you, I think this has been a good service. You know, everybody, you know, Valentine's Day is just not about couples, but it's for everybody. Yes. It's for everybody. Everybody has love to show. And just because you don't, might not have a husband, or you might not have a wife, or you may have one, and you be with somebody else. I talked to quite a few people in that same situation. But God loves you. And we love you. And other people love you. So just be encouraged. We're going to take up the offering. I know some people drop their offering in. But Pastor Terry, if you don't mind taking up the offering, we still going to pass the basket. 
may want to put in an offering. I know Prophet Josh is, is raising money for the tent, but please, please put in any tithes or offerings that you may have. And so he's also doing a march. I think it's when, when is the march? Friday? Saturday? For Andre Hill. Okay, and that is at what time? 1230 at the State House. At City Hall. Okay, also tonight uh, we will be having, I hope that everybody participates. I'm going to send you a link. I'm going to send you a link, Pastor Terry, if you want to participate. I'm a, I need your phone number, our phone number, so I can send you a link. If Sister Tawana is still watching, I'm going to send you a link. And we're going to do, um, it's called Dating in the Kingdom. I've been doing a series. Um, it began at the beginning of this month. We're just going to do it for this month. And I just want us to talk about dating, um, what we're looking for in mates, how we're staying holy. I was on a, a thing last night, a Zoom conference last night, and the lady gave a powerful testimony. She's still young. She's very pretty. She said she's been celibate for seven years. I said, you need to tell that to the kingdom. You need to tell that to the kingdom. Everybody don't have that testimony. And she said she got busy, and, and she said she's just living holy for God. I said, you need to tell that. There's a lot of prophets, apostles, Amen. I don't know, whatever, that ain't saying, they, they can't say it's been seven years. And they single. So we thank God for her testimony. And we thank God, I, I've been celibate for 13 years. So I thank God for that testimony. Because some people ain't been celibate for 10 minutes, some of them. So I thank God. So anyway, we are going to go on and we're going to live holy and we're going to talk about dating. Because God has somebody for everybody. It don't matter who you are, God got somebody for you. If you want somebody, God will give you somebody. Everybody should have a husband or a wife. If that's what your desire is, then you should have it. So we're going we gonna to talk about that. Now, if, if you are on the download, you don't need to be with nobody. You know what? It's better to be honest. See, people don't understand that. It's better to be honest and to fake something that you're not feeling. I have been in situations in my life and I'm not going to talk about it right now. I need to write the book to talk about that. But anyway, do um, you have anything you want to contribute, put in the offering? If not, I'm going to have Pastor Terry to put um, whoever want to put something in the offering. I'm going to have Pastor Terry pray over the offering. Okay. Okay, we're going to pray over the offering. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we come humbly before the throne, thanking the gift and the giver. Lord, as those that could not, Lord, touch their pockets so that they might be increased in their financials. Lord, we can play the tithes and offerings on a duly note on every situation and time. Lord, we thank you for your gifts of finances that are coming for all. Lord, we humbly thank you. Amen. 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 Y'all keep pressing Georgia in prayer. I'm still kind of concerned about her. She couldn't go. She couldn't make it this morning. I talk called her. Usually she calls me every morning and wakes me up. I called her this morning. She was asleep. And um, and that's not like her. So y'all keep in prayer because we know it ain't her time to go nowhere. So sometimes the devil, especially when we're getting older, you know, the devil will try to make us think it's almost that time. But it's not that time for her. There's still life in her. 
and we don't want anybody to get settled where they, they don't want. When you get to the place, and you and I know it's a pandemic, and believe me, sometimes I don't want to go out. I don't, I don't like the snow. I don't want to drive in the snow. It's snowing. It, and I used to have a job where I could take, I would take off the whole month of January, and then I'd come back to work in about February, or the middle of February, then that way I didn't have to worry about the snow. But I don't have that kind of job anymore. I think I were at, we're working from home, but when it's snowing, I get a um, Uber myself. Because it's hard getting out of the parking lot where I live at, and then I'm on a hill. So I got to get down the hill too. But I thank God, you know, that, that I'm working from home, but you got to still push. Because you get in that house, the devil will have you in the house and you won't leave. And that's the spirit to fight. Because you get in that house, depression will come in. And you don't want to get the bus. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to get a ride. You don't want to get out the house. We have to fight that house spirit. And the only thing is with the pandemic, you got to be careful where you got to go. But even if you go outside the door, get outside the door. Walk around the block. Walk from the curb to the to your house door. Get out every day to fight that spirit. Because you get in that house and the devil be having you think about your past. You be looking at your situation. You know, get out. Get out. Get out of that house. If that's all you can do, get out the house. Fight that spirit of depression. Don't let it come in because it will come in. And depression is a silent killer. It'll have you doing things or allowing things to happen. I was watching a TV program this morning. This guy, he was a painter. And what happened was he went, he got into some type of depression. And because he had got into the depression, he had some something on the back, on his back. The lady comes on, I think it's called True TV, but it used to be Crime TV or something. And so anyway, he had these things on his back. And his whole situation, the lady that was the, um, I can't think of the, um, the person doing the autopsy. Her, his whole situation, he could have lived if he would have went out the house and went to the doctor. His whole, whatever he had, it would have been easy to, to treat. It was salmonella. But because he did not get the treatment, the salmonella poisoning went into his bloodstream. Jeez. And when it went into his bloodstream, it killed him. And I know we know AAA in the past, they had those cases where people got salmonella poisoning. The salmonella doesn't just go into your bloodstream right away. It goes first in your body, and then it goes through your, your bowel, and then it goes then, and then it goes through other organs, and then it gets to your bloodstream. Yeah. But if they can catch it before it gets to your bloodstream, you can live. So he was in a situation he could have lived had he went to the doctor. If you're not feeling good, go to the doctor. Amen. Don't put it off. Yes. Heart disease is one of the number one causes of death. Amen. Go to the doctor. See about yourself. Yes. Even if you don't want to go. If you got to go to the emergency room, go to the emergency room. If you got a medical card, if they're to pay for it. If you don't have any medical insurance, they got places like Lower Lights. You can call that 211 number, I think, 221 or 211 number. They will tell you of the available health care that is free in Columbus, Ohio, and other cities. Please see about yourself because God will warn you. I remember that time I had a tooth infection. And, and I told the Lord, I said, if I go to the, I didn't have any dental insurance. But I had medical insurance. I said, Lord, if I go to the emergency room, the cold 50 was $850 just to go to the emergency room. And the Lord said, he told me, he said, is your life more than $850? I said, yes. I went to the emergency room. The doctor, they had one dentist come in, had the doctor come in. Then they had somebody that was like a dentist. I was over at OSU East. And they said, we called it just in time. I don't know what they called it, but I had a tooth infection for two weeks. And it had got, it was about, it had got into my bloodstream. But it was, I forgot what they called it. 
but it's some kind of disease that will cause your tongue to roll to the back of your mouth. And my tongue, and then he said if they wouldn't have caught it, was going to roll to the back of my mouth. So I thank God that I listened to his voice. Had I not listened to the voice of God and went, I didn't want to pay that $850 co-payment, but I would have been dead. So I went to the hospital. They had an ambulance take me over to OSU North on West 10th Avenue, and they did emergency surgery on me that same day. I was in the hospital for six days. For six days, they gave me uh, antibiotics. They took out the tooth, and I'm telling you, they had me on morphine. I was in so much pain. I didn't know that you could die from a tooth infection, but I found out that day that you could. So I thank God that I'm still in the land of living. So many testimonies where the devil tried to take me out of here. So I can tell you from experience, had I not listened to the voice of God, I would not be here. Listen to the voice of God. If he tell you to go to the doctor, go to the doctor. It may seem like it's minute or it's a mundane situation, but go. Go. So we're going to close out in prayer. And I'm just going to close you out. I think it was a good service. It was light, but it was good. I wish everybody happy Valentine's Day. Again, if you don't have a lover or a husband or whatever, God loves you more than anything. He loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for your sins. He loves you. You're not alone because God loves you. He loves you madly. And he will move heaven and earth for you. Amen. So be blessed. Father God, we just come before you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the service. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for what you're about to do in our life, Lord. Yes. We thank you for loving us, Lord. Even when we didn't love ourselves, you still loved us. Even when we didn't see worth in ourselves, you still seem worth in us. Yes. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we pray a blessing of safety upon everybody in here. We pray a blessing. If anybody's suffering from depression, Lord Jesus, we ask that you set them free from the depression right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. We bind up every spirit of depression right now. Set them free, Lord. Let them see their destiny. Let them see their purpose. Let them see what you are about to do in their life, Lord. We thank you for the poetry that they're going to write. We thank you for the business that they're going to have, Lord. We thank you that they're not going to fall for the trick of the enemy, but they're going to be everything that you called them to be, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the books, Lord. We thank you for the Frigidaire, Lord. We thank you for everything you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.